Hey there, EcoBeast Garage. This is Cam coming back to you uh, from my garage, uh, which you probably recognize some of the stuff there. So today we have a little bit of a problem here with uh, with old Felicia. So kind of take you around the whole thing. So I initially had to do a wheel bearing, which is kind of like a running joke between my friends and I about how often I have to do wheel bearings. Um, and then on top of that, the axle nut got stripped on and stripped off. So unfortunately, I had to get a new axle. So after axle, wheel bearing, ABS wheel speed sensor, all were replaced again, I finally got the car back on the road and then I started having fuel issues. So the codes that I got, and I'll make sure to post them here, uh, all had to do with low pressure on the fuel rail. So for those of you who have uh, the two liter EcoBoost engine like this, uh, you'll kind of get used to the, the look of it, of course. Um, now in behind my intake pipe, you'll see this little foam cap right here. This is the fuel pump, the injector pump uh, right here. So it's like basically a high pressure fuel pump. Um, it's not the one that's in the tank. We have one in the tank that sends fuel up into uh, this pump and then this pump fuels the fuel rail. Um, and that's just to keep up with, of course, the, the high fuel demands um, that these tar turbocharged engines have. Um, and so what ends up happening is that when, when a lot of the videos I've watched, they've changed that fuel pump out and then they've also changed and it's unplugged right now, but there's a sensor right here behind the intake. And I'll see if I can zoom in on it so you guys can see that a little bit closer. So this little sensor here is the one that we're gonna actually be replacing today. So there's a way to get a socket in there, uh, a deep socket. Uh, Austin's actually gonna come and help us with this, with this little part change today. Uh, and then we'll do a little follow up here towards the end of the video to see if it worked. Um, and if not, then we'll be doing a full fuel pump uh, installation once that part uh, arrives. So all in all, uh, it's going to be a little bit of work. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't foresee it taking too too long uh, for us to do the sensor at least. Uh, the fuel pump also should be pretty easy as long as you have the fuel dis uh, fuel line disconnect tools, which you can pick up at AutoZone or your local parts store. Um, but aside from the problems that I've had with this car, which is a good opportunity to make some content here for the channel. I also want to show you guys something that I embark will be embarking on uh, soon enough, uh, and it's actually sitting here in the garage. It is a 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6. Now this, if you can tell from the passenger side motor mount here, uh, it was a transverse application of the 3.5 EcoBoost uh, to the best of our knowledge because we don't know the donor car. Um, but it appears to have probably come from a Ford Flex by the looks of it. And so overall, it probably didn't have the, the tuning uh, or, the, or the, uh, the just the, the dynamics to, to really have a high horsepower output. Um, but this whole engine will get rebuilt. Um, the cams, the crank, the pistons, the rods, anything and everything that has to do with the, the actual structural pressure um, resistance of this engine uh, will be replaced. Uh, all this fuel rail... Uh, and the fuel system will be changed out to probably like an XDI or equivalent system so we can run full ethanol uh, blend on this engine. Um, the intake manifold and throttle body, the throttle body might survive, but we might have be, be changing this out to uh, a more of a, a ported and polished uh, intake manifold as well. So there's just a, bit, a lot of ambitious plans for this. This will be actually a long-term build, so uh, don't, don't expect this to be like in next episode or something to that effect. Um, after we get the engine torn down, uh, we'll actually be going through and getting a lot more of the kind of the, the bigger pieces to the puzzle uh, so that we can understand more about the 3.5 uh, and eventually put it into that car. So that'll be a fun build. I, I haven't heard of anyone putting this engine into a Focus. Um, by the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a tight squeeze, um, but there's a lot of plans actually a lot of high ambitious plans for that focus um, that sits behind me here so let's first get it running on this two liter EcoBoost engine and we'll go from there I don't know if you can see that
gets the job done though. When it decides to work. Hey. Just a little, little yeeteroo. Nice plug. Just through here. Put the plug facing down. Looks like that's there. The only thing I gotta do otherwise though, stick this and make sure I bring pressure back on the rail, otherwise I'm gonna be spraying fuel up here. And it's gonna be you know, not a not a good thing. That's on there tight. You gonna put the cover back on? Yeah, it's just an easy to cover in got to be pulled off anyways. Uh, so very, very quick and easy uh, changeover. Um, as you saw, it's a 27 millimeter. Um, despite other videos that say it's an inch and a 16th, it might technically be, but these are German built cars or German design cars, I should say. They're American built, but they it's a 27 millimeter. You can just slot it in right behind the intake manifold as you kind of saw there and t loosen it, tighten it. Make sure you take pressure off the top of the fuel rail though before you go and start taking stuff out. Even with cracking the pressure, we still had a little bit of fuel that came out of the end of the fuel rail. That's going to be normal. And when we go to start this car up, it might take a couple tries because it has to repressurize that fuel system. So it's not going to be just like, hey, it's bam, it's fixed. So don't freak out. Definitely just take things step by step if you ever have a problem like this with your Ford. Um, the next step is, and like I said in the video in the intro, we're gonna go ahead and take it for a little bit, bit of a test drive, see if we get any false knocks, any, any weird sensor uh, issues, um, and hopefully that maybe wraps up the problem. Um, if not, then like I said, this video will continue on and we'll be doing a fuel pump reinstallation. So uh, let's go ahead, we'll, we'll check in a little bit. Group chat name and mission statement and like all that other stuff. The octane adjust ratio. Clearing codes right now. Mm-hmm. All good. Give it a couple seconds. Good. What are the corrections looking like? So right now we are at positive fours for cylinders one, two, and four. Cylinder three, I had a monitor here, but I've been watching that OAR or octane adjustment ratio just to see how it's been building. It's been building up from 0.75 uh, up to 0.87, um, as I mentioned. Because we, we haven't even driven a mile yet. Yeah, we haven't even driven really more than maybe like a mile and a like a hair, um, and just in that small time, it's already crept up. Um, but we're about to go on the freeway and see see how it creeps up from there and, and, and watch corrections make sure that we, we stay in the positives. Are those Pop-Tarts? 
They are. What flavors? Uh, I think we got, we got frosted blueberry and then like, yeah, strawberry. Strawberry? Frosted blueberry. That's my, that's my, my cabinet maker breakfast of champions. Every With morning. a torque wrench? Oh, I mean, just the natural things that you keep in your car, you know. Healthy breakfast. Go boys. There's too many cars, we're not gonna do a pool. That sounds terrible. Jesus Christ. She feel, homie. It feels good. Octane adjustment ratio is back almost up to a full negative one. Um, we did throw a negative three on cylinder four. Really should have been data logging maybe to see where that happened, but it was definitely during one of the watt pulls. Um, probably still working out some of the bad gas kinks. It probably it? is. I mean, we I had a little bit over a quarter tank or just about a quarter tank of gas. Uh, Plus we're on a bumpy refueled. road. Kind of on a bumpy road. Somewhat, yeah. I can't say I've, again. I've ever, I've never really thrown a negative like quite like that. And I am kind of looking more for consistency. And across the board, it seems like this has done a lot to it's already help improve. Yeah, it's definitely improved. It's definitely fixed a lot of the issues. Right. Alright guys, so we're going to call it for the day. Um, we did get a, a healthy amount of positive corrections. We actually got all the way up to positive 4 actually on a couple pulls. Um, but while we're out here, it is 93 degrees Fahrenheit outside, which is hot and is not the ideal weather for a turbocharged car. Um, even with, despite the Mishimoto intercooler, you know, it's still hot temperatures. I'm maybe going to run, you know, anywhere from 2 to 3 degrees above outside temp at best. And that's after a little bit of highway cruising with no throttle. Um, but we're going to try it again later on tonight when it actually cools off and the sun's gone for the night and we'll, uh, we'll see where we're at and we'll, we'll do a little bit of an update at that point. But until then, uh, we'll make it a new episode if we have to come back to that fuel pump. Uh, but this is Cam from EcoBeast Garage. We will see you soon.